BC battery elimination circuit built in to the flight controller. It acts as a voltage regulator, reducing the voltage from the main LiPo battery, for example, 6S22.2 volt, to a lower constant voltage, such as 5 volt or 9 volt, and eliminates the need for a separate battery to power the electronics. Almost all flight controllers have a 5 volt BC to power the radio receiver, GPS, etc., while some also offer 9 volt or 12 volt BECs designed to power the video transmitter. Although you can power FPV equipment directly from the battery, using the BC can yield better results. It is important to choose the correct voltage source depending on the device you are powering. For example, a receiver operates at 5 volt, so it should be soldered to the 5 volt pin. A video transmitter, which operates from 7.4 volt to 26.4 volt, requires the appropriate pin for that voltage. This information can be found in the description of the flight controller and by checking the schematics showing where they are located. Components, such as motors, ESC, electronic speed controller, and VTX system. Different controllers support different firmware. This firmware is a type of software code that is loaded into the internal memory of the flight controller. There are several popular firmware options among users, such as Betaflight, KISS, iNav, and others. Different firmware options offer various features and specializations for different applications. For example, iNav is designed with GPS usage in mind, while Betaflight is more focused on the flight characteristics of the drone and its software tuning. Let's briefly discuss the main firmware for flight controllers. Betaflight, an open source firmware and the most popular firmware for FPV drones due to its large community and regular updates. It allows for easy troubleshooting in case of issues. KISS, this is a closed source firmware with hardware and firmware controlled by a private company. This means you are limited to using their specific flight controllers. It has its specific advantages for racing or freestyle. iNav, better suited for drones that require navigation features, autopilot or mission-based flight. The flight controller firmware is configured using a computer or smartphone via a USB cable, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi through a special program that corresponds to the firmware of the controller itself. Each firmware has its own interface and parameters that can be modified. These parameters can be found in the description of the flight controller itself. The built-in barometer in the flight controller is used to measure atmospheric pressure, allowing the drone to determine its altitude above sea level. This enables the drone to hover at a specific height and location using the GPS module. To ensure the accurate operation of the barometer and to prevent airflow from affecting it during the drone's flight, a small piece of foam is placed over it. All flight controllers have their sizes, which are divided into two types. The first is the actual size of the flight controller, which indicates its dimensions and whether it can physically fit into the frame, and the mounting size, which refers to the distance between adjacent mounting holes on the flight controller itself, which has specific standards such as 20 by 20 millimeters and 30.5 by 30.5 millimeters. The choice of mounting size depends on the size of your drone and your preferences regarding design and weight. It is important to ensure that the selected flight controller matches the mounting holes on the drone frame for reliable attachment and that they align with each other. Processors for FPV drones evolve over time, and each new generation offers improvements in computing speed and memory capacity. Here are the main generations of microcontrollers used in FPV drone flight controllers. They are called F1, F3, F4, F7, and H7. The first generation F1 and the third generation F3 were simple to use and had a basic set of functions, such as flight stabilization and support for remote control. They are now rarely used for modern FPV drones due to their limited capabilities and processing speed. The fourth generation F4. These controllers typically have even greater computing power, additional sensors, improved support for various types of hardware, and advanced features such as enhanced stabilization systems, support for more accurate GPS navigation, improved autopilot functions, etc. 
There are three main variants of F4 used in flight controllers, F405, F411, and F453. One of the main advantages of F4 over F3 is the data processing speed. The clock frequency of the F4 processor is 180 MHz, which is twice as fast as F1 and F3. They are often used in tiny whoop and sinew hook drones that do not require large computations for flight. Seventh generation F7, F7 processors are used in FPV drones due to their high performance and ability to process larger amounts of data in real time. F7 processors have a higher clock frequency compared to previous generations, allowing for faster data processing from sensors and execution of complex stabilization algorithms. With a larger amount of RAM and flash memory, F7 processors can store more settings and support more complex software functions. F7 processors have better support for new features such as telemetry, GPS, and auxiliary sensors, which can be important for long-duration flights and racing. They can manage a greater number of peripheral devices simultaneously, making them ideal for complex FPV drone configurations. The use of F7 processors in FPV drones significantly improves overall performance and provides pilots with more opportunities for customization and flight optimization. This is especially important for tech-savvy users who want to maximize the potential of their drones. They are often used in freestyle drones and Cinelifter. Generation H7, the latest generation of processors, which provides maximum performance. This can be beneficial for large and complex drones that require processing a large amount of data. They have significantly higher clock frequencies and computational power compared to F7, allowing them to support the latest features and technologies that require greater computational power, such as complex software filters, advanced navigation algorithms, and integration with additional sensors. As FPV drone technologies continue to evolve, H7 processors provide the power reserve necessary for future innovations and features. The choice of a specific processor depends on your needs, budget, and technical requirements for the drone. It is important to consider that newer processors generally offer better performance and more opportunities for expanding functionality. The gyroscope is one of the key components of the FPV drone flight controller, responsible for measuring and stabilizing the drone's orientation in space. The gyroscope measures the rotation speed of the drone around its axis. It is integrated directly with the flight controller board and is often combined with other sensors, such as accelerometers, to ensure complete control over the flight. The stability and accuracy of the flight depend on the choice of gyroscope. MPU 6000, one of the most popular gyroscopes due to its stability and noise resistance. It provides accurate measurements and is a reliable option for most drones. ICM-20602 and ICM-20689, modern gyroscopes with high sensitivity. They have better resolution but are prone to failures due to vibrations. They are used in newer controllers to ensure high flight accuracy. The flight controller on the drone uses a series of sensors to determine movement and orientation. The main sensor used for this purpose is called the Inertial Measurement Unit, IMU. The IMU contains both an accelerometer and a gyroscope. The gyroscope is used to measure the angular velocity of the drone, while the accelerometer measures the linear acceleration of the drone. Soft mounting of the flight controller is crucial for its optimal operation, as it reduces vibrations from the frame that affect the gyroscope. Almost all flight controllers today have M4 holes that allow for the insertion of rubber dampers, enabling the use of M3 hardware to attach the flight controller to the frame. BC battery elimination circuit built into the flight controller, it acts as a voltage regulator, reducing the voltage from the main LiPo battery, for example, 6S22.2 volt, to a lower constant voltage, such as 5V or 9V, and eliminates the need for a separate battery to power the electronics. Almost all flight controllers have a 5V BC to power the radio receiver, GPS, etc., while some also offer 9V or 12V BEX designed to power the video transmitter. Although you can power FPV equipment directly from the battery, using the BC can yield better results. 
It is important to choose the correct voltage source depending on the device you are powering. For example, a receiver operates at 5 volt, so it should be soldered to the 5 volt pin. A video transmitter, which operates from 7.4 volt to 26.4 volt, requires the appropriate pin for that voltage. This information can be found in the description of the flight controller and by checking the schematic showing where they are located. Flight controllers have three main types of connectors for connections. Plastic JST connectors, solder pads, through holes. Plastic connectors are less durable but convenient to use, while solder pads are more robust but require soldering. Through holes allow for direct soldering or the use of pins. Black box for the flight controller is a tool for recording flight data, allowing for the collection of detailed information about the drone's behavior during flight. The black box, also referred to as the black box, records data such as the drone's orientation, gyroscope measurements, remote control commands, motor output signals, and more. These collected data can be analyzed using specialized software, such as Black Box Explorer or PID Toolbox, for fine-tuning filtering parameters and PID settings. The black box helps identify flight issues such as vibrations, ESC problems, incorrect PID settings, and more. To record black box logs, the flight controller must have either built-in flash memory or an SD card slot. The capacity of this memory is specified in the description of the flight controller. A significant advantage of flight controllers with an SD card slot is the ability to use larger flash memory, allowing for the storage of more flight logs. The black box is a powerful tool for FPV drone pilots who want to gain a deeper understanding of their drone's behavior and optimize their flight performance. Using the black box can significantly improve flight quality and provide more precise and reliable control of the drone. Each flight controller has an arrow that indicates the orientation of the gyroscope and accelerometer. It should point towards the drone's camera, meaning it should face forward and be positioned on top, as it is depicted only on one side of the flight controller. If it is not set correctly, for example, facing backward, the drone will start to perform mirrored controls, making it uncontrollable. If it happens that you cannot orient the arrow towards the camera, this can be corrected using software by adjusting the gyroscope and accelerometer settings. Flight controllers have UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver or Transmitter, a serial data port that allows devices to communicate with each other. In fact, it is decoded as Universal Synchronous Receiver Transmitter. From this, it can be understood that it is universal, meaning anyone can use it. It has receiver and transmitter contacts for communication. It is asynchronous, which means it can transmit and receive data simultaneously. It is used to connect external components such as radio receivers, video transmitters, GPS, etc. UARTs are very simple interfaces. Flight controllers have a number of UARTs depending on their size. Flight controllers have a limited number of UARTs, some have up to six, while smaller FCs may have only two. This depends on the processor and available space. Before purchasing, ensure that there are enough UARTs for the devices you plan to use. The information pins are RX and TX. These are most often used for exchanging information between the FC and devices such as receivers, VTX, GPS, etc., along with power pins 5 volts and ground. On the schematic to the FC, you can see TX1, RX1 or TX5, RX5, and nearby pins with 5 volt ground. The number after TX and RX indicates which UART it is. For example, TX5, RX5 is URT5, or TX3, RX3 is URT3. This allows the FC to understand under which number the data transmission channel of the connected device is engaged. For example, if we want to solder a receiver to the flight controller, we look for any free pins on the FC for power 5 volt, ground, and solder 5 volt, ground from the receiver to them. From the receiver, we take the TX and RX pins and solder them, for example, to TX1 and RX1 on the FC, and this will be one UART, but in reverse order, TX to RX and RX to TX. 
This is necessary so that information between the FC and peripheral devices is exchanged in a loop, not one way. In the flight controller, two UARTs are necessarily involved, the receiver and VTX, video transmitter. If we want to solder another device, for example, GPS, it will also take its UART. Simply soldering a device to the FC is not enough. It is necessary in the software, for example, Betaflight, to check a box or select from the list what is actually soldered to the FC. The FC itself does not understand what is connected to it, and therefore URT helps identify the device by its number at the end of RX and TX, and until this is enabled in the software, the device will not work. You cannot solder multiple devices to one UART, they must be distributed across free RX and TX. Also, you cannot connect multiple devices to power pins. When selecting an FC, it is important to consider its compatibility with the ESC. Four-in-one ESCs are often sold together with flight controllers under the name FPV stack. This includes several electronic components, usually a microcontroller, flight controller, and speed controllers, ESC, electronic speed controller, which are connected together. This is very convenient, as you can immediately install such a ready-made assembly on the drone from one manufacturer, which is cheaper and more convenient. However, if you use FC and ESC from different brands, they must be compatible with each other. The contacts may differ, requiring changes in the wiring harness, which can cause significant issues. If you are building a six or eight motor drone, then the FC and ESC must have outputs for them. All these features mentioned in this video also apply to AIO, all-in-one, controllers. If the processor on the board is overheating, it has failed. For those who want to fly near waterfalls and fall into snow, or in case of drowning the drone, there is a possibility to protect its electronic components from burning out through sealing with special protective coatings that create a waterproof barrier. Silicone sealant can be used to cover the board, but it is important to ensure that no critical connections or sensors are covered. Typically, the chips are left unsealed, while all bare traces must be covered. For this, Products like B7000, T6000, or special coatings for printed circuit boards are used. Don't forget to check the number of available pins for connecting servos if necessary. Check if the board has pins for soldering a buzzer for locating the drone by sound. Look at the voltage at which the flight controller operates, where one's is 3.7 volt, meaning it operates from 14.8 volt to 22.2 volt. The wires soldered between all components should be twisted into a braid for quick troubleshooting and should have adequate lengths for convenient disassembly of components. Try to route the wires in such a way that they touch the flight controller as little as possible to avoid interfering with the sensitive sensors. Each flight controller has a pinout diagram and recommended connections for devices with it.